So hello again, we're going further. And uh, now greetings to Felipe Haro from Nurjax Consulting. He will tell us about modeling social behavior on uh, energy consumption. So welcome Felipe and here we go. Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Felipe Haro. I am the founder of Nordjax Consulting. I work with corporations, startups, governments, and students all over the world in all kinds of industries and areas of knowledge. On this presentation, I will talk about social behavior and how this social behavior impacts energy consumption for a particular individual. This is a research project at a PhD level and it's still ongoing, but has interesting properties that I find important to discuss. Of course, I used any logic to solve this issue in which I created an agent-based model. But before saying anything else, I want to explain why I decided to show this model on this conference. There is something I wanted to do for a while, but never got a perfect application to do so until this point. What I wanted to do is to apply a data model, either by using machine learning or statistics, that could be used during a simulation runtime in order to change the behavior of a system based on that data model. In other words, I wanted to find a business case in which I could use any predictive model and embed it in a simulation, as long as it made sense to do so. So in a way, this presentation is not meant to flex how amazing the results of this work are or to act as a hidden campaign to save energy or anything like that. My purpose is to inspire you as an Enelogic user or as a team leader to apply this technique to your own models if you see fit. So in other words, I want to inspire you on the possibility to use machine learning models or statistical models in your simulation, making it more robust and more powerful when it comes to influence stakeholders. Of course, if you're interested in energy consumption models, then that's a plus. So let's get started with what this project is about. What is the question that we were trying to answer here? The question is the following. How behavioral influencing strategies can improve energy efficiency in a commercial and educational building. In other words, what can I do as a building owner to influence people in order for them to be more likely to act in ways that will save energy in my building, while also, if possible, influence them to spread the word about energy saving to others? To do the simulation, we will need a building and data about that building in order to build a case that can be extrapolated or extended to other buildings of similar nature. In this image, you can see the building that we will use for our business case. This is the Faculty of Engineering and Information Technology of the University of Technology, Sydney, or UTS. In our study, we will use this university building and in order to simplify the situation a bit, only one floor of that building. Floor seven. So let's review the social technical framework that we built in order to frame the problem in a more structured way. This framework will also help you understand the problem way better. So we have the building and the building has energy services. We will use three particular energy services for our model lights that can be found in rooms, open spaces, and corridors, air conditioning, and lifts or elevators. Other energy consuming artifacts such as computers, microwaves, or other electronic devices are ignored. Of course, there is an interaction between the occupants of the building and the services that generate energy consumption. And the following is our first hypothesis. The occupant characteristics are correlated with their energy conservation behavior. These characteristics are demographics, such as age, salary, etc. They are behavioral, such as preference for taking stairs, how often they go to the building, etc. 
climate change awareness, which is self-explanatory, and willingness to conserve energy, such as how they behave at home or if they are willing to change their behavior under certain circumstances. As an example, we could hypothesize that a young, healthy person might be more likely to take the stairs instead of the elevator. Our second hypothesis is that we can generate interventions such as money, public recognition, etc., that, that can improve the willingness to conserve energy for these individuals. So the question now is, how do we link these occupant characteristics with how they will behave with elevator or stair usage, light management, and air conditioning management? How do we predict, based on the individual physical and psychological characteristics of a person, if that person will save energy or take the stairs? We need two things for this. Collect the data. It's very unlikely that you have subjective data on the people who visit your building. So a survey using a sample of the population should do the trick. The second part is then building a prediction model based on the data collected. Let's touch this later. So how does the survey look like? This table shows some of the questions in the survey. I won't go too much in detail, but these are some examples. From the demographics side, you have age, gender, position, etc. From the behavioral side, questions such as how many levels up do you most often travel or how much time would you wait for the lift before taking the stairs. Uh, from the climate change perspective, categorical questions such as I believe climate change is real or I am very concerned about climate change, which have answers such as I strongly agree or I strongly disagree and things in between. On the fourth category, we have I buy only energy efficient A plus light bulbs or I look for ways to save energy at UTS. Within the answers obtained from the survey, there are two questions which answers we want to predict based on all the other answers. The first one is, I consciously turn off lights and appliances when I do not need them, no matter where I am. The answer to this will define the probability for some individual to manage the lights in a way that reduces energy consumption. This can be, among other things, to avoid using light when there is enough natural light in the room. The second question is, in a normal situation, do you prefer to take stairs or use lifts to get to your destination? The answer to this question will define the probability for someone to actively take the stairs instead of the elevator. To predict these values, we build a Python model using a variant of multivariate regression. So we can predict what the answers to these questions are going to be based on the independent values from the table. For a particular individual, the demographic information is not going to change in the short term, for instance, age or education. But the climate change ideas and willingness to conserve energy can quickly change based on influence from others. The answers can also change based on some reward system that is put in place. And this reward system is a strategy that the building manager can also use. The rewards available to take the stairs instead of the lift are the following. Money, public appreciation, extra holidays, bonus marks, discounts, and medals. These rewards can come in many flavors, but in the survey, it was asked what reward they would accept in order to take the stairs instead of the elevator. But what interests us the most is that it, it is totally possible through influence, either by peers, education, or leadership, to generate a small change in something such as the concern about climate change, the accepted rewards, or on the awareness of green energy usage at home on a particular individual. And through a predictive model, we would be able to predict the new behavior on energy savings in the building by the same individual. In other words, if an individual answered neither agree nor disagree to the question, 
I believe climate change is real, educating or influencing this individual to slightly agree on this very same question would have an effect on the answer to I consciously turn off lights and appliances when I do not need them no matter where I am. We can do the same with rewards, influencing someone to take less money or increase the value of getting public appreciation as a reward in order to influence the energy saving behavior. So the question is, how do we know what the effect of this change is? How do we know how much more likely the individual is to save energy when we change the idea this person has about climate change? This can be done with many kinds of prediction models, but in our project, we use a multivariate regression to tackle the problem. We know that Java is not the best tool to develop prediction models, and it's better to rely in languages that are more in line with data science or data analytics, such as R or Python. Luckily uh, for us, the AnyLogic team created the AnyLogic Pipeline Library, which is a great tool that allows us to create an interface between AnyLogic and Python very easily and smoothly. So what do we do? We do our data science job using Python. Our survey with questions is composed by around 40 questions in a sample of around 140 individuals that can be students or part of the university staff. Remember, we're using a university building for our research. The data sample is small, and this work was developed during COVID lockdown, making it very hard to get additional data. But onto the data science. We used sklearn, which is the most popular machine learning library for Python. And with it, we used the regression methods available in order to make the predictive model that we needed. With it, we have now a static predictive model on how an individual would behave in terms of energy savings based on the demographics information of that person. And this is a very typical data science exercise. But now what the simulation will do is that it will make this predictive model dynamic. Now, don't forget that you can perfectly well do the same using any machine learning algorithm depending on your particular problem. So let's go ahead and watch the simulation. This is the 3D version of it. Since we have only 140 samples from our survey, we use the Python model to generate thousands of people that would follow answers based on the linear regression. In the simulation, there are two main kinds of individuals. The students who have lab activities, socialize and work on the workspaces, and the staff who have their workspaces and interact with other staff members and students on common spaces, meetings, or classrooms. All these individuals can also interact in corridors and lifts while they move to their different destinations. Now, there can be an effort made by the staff members to influence others by using meetings, classes, or other social interactions with other individuals to push ideas about a particular topic of interest, such as climate change, diet, energy saving practices, etc. So that people can be educated, gain awareness, or be influenced to change the way of thinking which would change the way they behave when it comes to either taking the stairs or reduce the use of electricity that is within their control. In a semester, there are almost a thousand students that have a schedule and go to the university often when they have a lab to attend, for example. They can later stay in the lounge room or use any of the workspaces to study or do research. The staff, on the other hand, stays on the workspaces or private offices they attend the lab if they're a professor, and they attend meetings in the meeting rooms and go to the kitchen if needed. The university is a relatively big structure. It has more than seven floors in real life, but since we are interested in simulating only up to floor seven, we removed all the floors above it. The students and staff members can come into the university and move around based on a set of rules. Light is very important for the simulation since natural light influences whether someone will use artificial light or not, depending on how much light they need to perform their work. 
There are days with lower light and days with more natural light. And of course, different hours during the day provide different levels of light, such as nighttime. In the 3D simulation, we can represent these changes for visualization purposes, and we can see how someone who stays working till late hours at night uses the light to work. Individuals also have the choice to take lifts or stairs. And we can see here how this choice is made on the first floor of the building. The elevator behavior is significantly simplified since we're not considering movements through all the floors, but it serves the purpose of the study. The simulation has many cosmetic elements that make it easier to understand. We can use this visualization to understand what level of light is being used in the different sections of the floor. Some of the rooms have access to natural light, and if someone is conscious about saving energy, they will not use artificial light when there is enough natural light to do the work. For the air conditioning, a similar thing happens. So let's zoom in here, where there is a meeting happening. We can also zoom here, where there is a lab happening. In both cases, there could be a few minutes of discussion to educate, influence, or convince people about a particular topic. For instance, climate change. So what is happening during this discussion? Let's simplify this to a set of three abstract independent discrete variables with values from one to five. And the dependent variable that will be the incentive for someone to save energy also discretize from one to five. So A equals two, B equals three, C equals four, and S equals three. During the meeting or the class, there is a chance for someone to be convinced about the topic A, B, or C. This probability is arbitrary and based on assumptions, for instance, 1% chance. After the meeting, this person was influenced or educated and changed uh, A to 3. With these new values, we use the Python model to predict the value of S, so the individual can end up with a value of S equals 4, which has a slight increase of energy saving efforts. The opposite can also happen. Now, it's important to realize that as a building manager, in order to strategize on the ideas to push forward on education and information in order to fulfill the energy saving agenda, the predictive model is enough, since it tells you in a way what are the variables that have more weight in the prediction of a dependent variable. But the simulation can actually show the impact of that strategy. Let's remember, as I mentioned before, that it is also possible to give rewards to individuals who make efforts to save energy. This requires a financial effort when it comes to give money, bonuses, or organize events for public appreciation. It is also difficult to verify if the individual took an action to save energy or not. The results for the purpose of this presentation are less important than the general concept that I wanted to portray, and also preliminary since there is more to do in the future. We see after running multiple simulations, an improvement in the order of 6 to 8% reduction on energy utilization, purely based on education and influence alone. And we see a similar level of improvement by using interventions such as money or discounts, this after just one month. There is also a secondary effect from the study that shows an increase in the number of calories used by taking the stairs, improving this way the general health of the population that visits this building which I'm not showing here. So I hope we understand now how we managed to use the prediction model during the simulation runtime to change the characteristics of individuals who belong to the system. I have done this with other projects, for example, to predict manufacturing times or dispatch times using a machine learning model. But for this technique, this was the only project that I was actually allowed to show publicly. This project is also not completed yet and will have other elements and scenarios coming in the future. I don't know yet what I can expect to come. And that's all I want to show today. And I am open to questions, if there is any. Um, thank you. So, thank you. Thank you, Felipe. So we're ready to move to the Q&A session right now. And well, thank you. Yeah, I see that we already have some questions, so please, you can start. Well, thank you for everyone who attended. 
I see that from Antuela. Uh, yeah, so she's saying that she's very, very interested. You were uh, interested in published this work. It will be suitable to submit to the following special issue. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of work to do uh, with this still. Um, this project is actually in a post in support for a PhD project and it's going to be published or sent to different uh, journals and I will, I will put this as an option as well. Um, do I understand correctly that the prediction model is a discrete generator of events based on the facts of the behavior of the same person in different conditions? Well, I don't know if I understand the question very well, but the thing is that every person has different characteristics and it's a typical like statistical machine learning model to understand these uh, dependent variables and to predict something based on the de dependent variables, any behavior at all. So what I I'm doing is I'm changing one particular variable through influence and run the, the predictor, predictor model again during simulation runtime in order to change how the person will behave. And this is done iteratively uh, until the simulation ends, basically. I don't know if I understood the question correctly or not. Um, what else is here? A lot of congratulations. <laughs> um, ah, there's there's no other question actually. No, uh, I've got another one. So mm -hmm. uh, from Andre Lunev, just ah. a few seconds ago. Yeah. So how correct is it to extrapolate a sample of 140 observations to the behavior of thousands of people? Um, yeah. So 100. So it seems that uh, Philip. Do you Philip still see me? Ah. So oh, yeah. this is yeah. um, yeah. this is why I chose to do a regression model, even though it's not perfectly uh, valid. You could increase the survey size to uh, the thousands and improve it. For now, this is the best we can get. And you know, when you model something, you need to do uh, what we what uh, the best with what with the data you have. Another option that was also possible since the data was, was low was instead of doing the prediction model was to do a system dynamics model because system dynamics works very well with social sciences basically on how people behave. So for example, if you have a stock that changes the climate change, you will have causalities that are going in the direction of, uh, for example, the, the behavior in energy savings. So you would have this model, but this requires a lot of work on knowledge and understanding causalities, which you don't need when you do a predictive model. So the answer is, this is the best we could do with what we have available. Um, so that's why I said that the results are not the most important part of this, of this work, which will continue in the future. The most important part is the idea, the concept of using these models made in Python that can be anything really, and be able to use them in runtime to be able to change the system according to certain changes in in the individuals individual elements of the system. Uh, how do you validate your model? So this is a kind of model that is not possible for, to validate until you just wait for a few months. Uh, one thing, but there are other uh, validation methods that you can use because you also have, don't have historical data. What you can do is first, you can do sensitivity analysis. So what you do is you have a certain, certain set of assumptions. Uh, one of them, which I mentioned in the, in the presentation, which is what is the probability to be able to convince someone under particular situations. And you use a sensitivity analysis to see how much this, this, this change influences the whole system. 
if it makes sense, basically, then you're, uh, you have a, a, at least that level of, of validation. You can also have a structured validation uh, to understand if, if things are, are going well based on an animation. For example, if you, if you have someone that is in the university, you want to see if, they, if things are moving according to what they expect. These kind of validations are also possible. It's not always um, based on historical data or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, how much does the prediction model impact the runtime of your model? Uh, this is also, this is something I have I had problems in the past where, and this is why I sometimes I don't use it because it takes a long time at the individual level because running this in Python separately takes a bit of time. And in particular, where you run a simulation for longer periods, in this case, it was a month to three months. Uh, you have to wait a bit to, to do this. If you are going on the millions, you will, like the millions of iterations, um, you will need to do something uh, like more advanced, I guess, uh, in order to be able to, to do multiple predictions at the same time. Um, so yeah, the, the runtime is actually a problem, but it wasn't a big problem in this model in particular. Uh, did you use the discrete events model elements in any logic? In this simulation, it was a 100, um, I think it was 100% agent-based, maybe with a bit of system dynamics, but very little. Uh, there was no discrete events used in this model. Um, from Daniel Arthur, what future developments do you think are needed to integrate modeling with data science functionalities? Mm, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, the, what we have right now is, is actually pretty good. Like the, the Python um, library that AnyLogic has uh, works quite well. So if you're able to build data, model, data, data models, uh, machine machine learning statistical uh, your the the technology is ready to to integrate them in any logic already um so I have, yeah. yeah 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 i just wanted to say that we have two more minutes for last questions so yeah go ahead okay there's uh, luis lopez asking what impact would you like to have would you like to have with this work so in general i'm very agnostic to whatever happens in in these models. I don't um, develop models or develop projects with an agenda in my mind. I just do whatever have <laughs> uh, I accept whatever results come. Um, so I don't know if I have a preference. This this like more a, pol a political question, but uh, what it seems to be is that. Uh, people with more education on climate change or people even with vegan diets or more education on, on, on veganism or these things that are more on the environmental side tend to save more energy automatically. Uh, and that's, the, I think, the interest of this project, like how you can change their minds on particular topics in order to, to have an effect on other more important things. Not that climate change is not important, obviously. Um, I don't know if we have more time for another question. We have one more minute. So Okay, so Andre Lunev, what time frame did you consider the building to be open? Year, month, how was the impact of changing weather factors taken into account? So there was a, a little bit of weather factors here in relation to how much light you had during the day. So that would affect uh, if someone needed more artificial light in order to be able to do to their work. This simulation was run for one month, and at least for this, for this uh, presentation, but it's expected to run it for a full semester uh, for the full analysis, so six months. And that's a, a good amount of time because then you can change people's mind. In It takes long to change people's minds. And, you can see that in simulation results. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Felipe, for your great presentation and great Q&A session. Hope to see you on our platform at uh, our disc for the further discussions, uh, the roundtables and discussion boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much once again. Thank you, everyone who attended. Uh, thank you as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.